G'day, Simon here, Explosive Action, and we are going to do a room tour for 2020. It's been a while since I've done one of these. We're going to go take a look at the DVD shelves, the VHS, the Blu-rays, the VCDs, Laserdiscs, LP, CDs, and more, you name it. And we're going to listen to General Surgery and the County Medical Examiners while we do it. Let's go. Now we start off with the man cave sign that's not at the entrance, it's actually at the exit of the cave, but you know, whatever. And uh, that's been there since the last one. A lot of what you're going to see has not changed, but um, quite a few bits are moved around and uh, reorganised. So one of the first things that's moved around is the comedy shelf. Um, I've put it right near the door. Easy to get to, and it's the films that um, my wife uh, would be more likely to go and grab. So it's easy to get to, um, and there's not that many of them. So Blu-ray is on the top, and we go down to DVDs, double shelf. So that's pretty much all. Comedy is not my main thing. Um, there's a few other comedies in sci-fi and horror, and uh, in Hong Kong section, of course. But for most comedies, they live here. And another shelf that's been moved around. This one is sort of the overflow. It's the drama and the thriller, basically stuff that is not particularly genre film ends up in here. Um, and again, it's not a huge one, so you can get a flavour for the types of titles in there. Blu-rays, DVDs, a few series, and then below that, my small collection of PlayStation 2 games. And the next thing is this cupboard. Now, this is formerly known as the VHS Cupboard of Doom, but there's not a great deal amount of VHS in it anymore. We'll go and have a look. Through the posters. The top shelf is uh, three layers deep of uh, Australian VHS and a few uh, others, but uh, yeah, I really culled back on my Australian tapes. If it's in here, it does not have a DVD. That is the, um, the goal behind my VHS collection, uh, of the Australian tapes anyway. Um, yeah, pretty much that. And we go down further, this is where the CDs overflow from the CD shelves. And down here, these are the VCD drawers. So. Got quite a collection of VCDs going on now. Hong Kong films, of course. And some, uh, these are like DVD-Rs and things over the years I've collected. Nothing too exciting. And more VCDs in here. Uh, below that is the Japanese VHS collection, which is also three layers deep. Uh, I've done a overview video of all my Japanese tapes recently, if you want to check that out. And then below that, is the LP's overflow. So the cupboard's got a bit of everything in it. And seven inches there. So that's pretty much all of that. And then on the drawers down here, which are a little hard to open one-handed, uh, is all the cassettes. So they're all A to Z of my audio cassettes. And it's the same on the shelf, uh, the drawer below it. But it is somewhat challenging to open. There we go, so there's more in there, but I won't get it any further, it gets a bit stuck. So taking a bit of a wider look now, as you can see from where I'm standing, we can see more of the shelves, and my awesome Robo Wall poster, it's one of my favourite things. We'll take a walk over to the built-ins. So when I got this house, these shelves are built into the wall. And um, Presumably they were for tools uh, or equipment, nuts and bolts and stuff, but they just happened to be perfect size for DVDs and Blu-rays. Like, you couldn't ask for better size shelves. Completely perfect. Um, and considering the shelves were built in the 80s, somebody was really planning ahead for me. So this is uh, where a lot of the labels go. Um, we've got uh, my leftovers of uh, Anchor Bay, which is not many, and Blue Underground DVDs, not many. All the um, Roger Corman Shout Factory. Uh, this is where the Scream and Shout Factory stuff starts. Goes along. Try to avoid the glare best as I can. And further on here. Onto the 88 film Slashers. Got all of those, and the 88 Films Italian line, also up to date with those. There are not many labels that I want to stay up to date with. 88, 
Italian and Slasher and Asia line is pretty much it at this point. We start on the Vinegar Syndrome. Not a label I collect everything, just the ones I want. Lots of the slipcase editions, regular editions. On to uh, Severin, or Severin. And some um, Scorpion DVDs, because they fit in there. Severin Blu-rays, and then on to the Scorpion Blu-rays. Quite a lot of those. Big fan of Walt's releases, he does lots of good stuff. And then a handful of Synapse and Kino Lorba. We go down to the Code Reds. Quite a lot of Code Reds. So there's some DVDs. Not many of them left anymore. And on to Bill's Blu-rays. Banana Bill. Say what you want about Banana Bill. He has made some great releases over the years. If anybody thinks it's hard to get their titles now, you weren't there in the early days getting from Bill's Big Cartel directly. That was a crapshoot. And we've got some Dark Force stuff there on the end. Now the titles on their sides, there's usually a bit of a theme to them. So we've got uh, sort of Raro Blu-rays there. The Creep Show, obviously. A few 88s that don't fit in elsewhere. Some Agfa. Um, got the Blood Trilogy and the Wizard of Gore there. Synapse Blu-rays. Paul Nashy Scream Factories. Uh, what do we got up here? Some more 88s that don't fit in elsewhere. Um, some um, Draft House titles. And uh, which ones are these? Ah, uh, yes, the awesome Miami Connection. Fantastic. And uh, got a few um, of the uh, Retro Media Blu rays. Uh, Street Show Blu-rays, I haven't done many, and I've put up my Argentos from um, Shout Factory, uh, no, from Scorpion, and from Synapse. We've got the Phantasm uh, Arrow Sphere box. I was very happy with this set. Um, don't feel any need to upgrade to any of the other sets, so I'm happy with this one. I quite like the Sphere. It's got my Wormwood signed poster next to the Rotor poster. Awesome. I didn't show this actually. I've got two signed uh, pictures here. One of Bruce Campbell and one of Dolph Lundgren, both to me, which was awesome. So looking from this angle, we've got my um, study, my work desk actually now as well. And it's boarded off with my very old wooden plaque Total Recall poster, which I found uh, in a charity shop 20 years ago. And I got some more Arnie on the wallpaper because you can never have enough Arnie. Um, so this is where I edit my videos, this is where I do my day-to-day -day work now. The work laptop on top, my home PC is below it. I switch between the two on these two monitors with this pretty awesome KVM. That lets me swap uh, the keyboard and mouse across uh, the two screens and the third screen of the laptop when I'm in work mode. Some posters, again the Robo Wolf frame, amazing. Lithograph up there. So this shelf here is dedicated to all my Doctor Who. Pretty much all of the um, classic Doctor Who era. The new Blu-rays down there. I don't usually show this stuff because Doctor Who is not something that I um, feel the need to really show on the channel. But it's one of my favourite shows and always has been. And then down here is um, uh, TV box sets. Mainly um, British comedies and things, but there's a few others in there. You can see a future armor box set down there. So this side of the A-frame is part of my action collection. Uh, this is a double-sided A-frame rescued from an old video store. And uh, we start at the top with uh, the post-apocalyptic Blu-rays and DVDs. Moving on to some Westerns and some black exploitation stuff. And then we continue here with the A to Z Blu-rays, which start on the other side. I'll go over there in a bit. Just general action films and war films, starting about there. And uh, I do love cheap war action. We've got some more on DVD here. Plenty of those Impact South African DVDs, very hard to get. Some great titles there. And then we turn into A to Z general action DVDs. And goes down to the bottom. I've got a full shelf free now that I moved the thrillers, so that's awesome. So 
So we'll flick over to the other side where the action DVD and Blu-ray shelf commences. Um, so at the top there we've got some sort of compilation sets, uh, a few box sets and things like that. Um, and then pretty much we start off with um, starting by, and it's kind of a loose ordering that I've came up with in my own head, but we start by Action Star in weight of how I see them uh, in the general action star landscape. So we start off with Arnold Schwarzenegger, moving on to Sylvester Stallone, Jean-Claude Van Damme, the mighty Dolph Lundgren, and then on to the absolute mammoth wall of Steven Seagal. And then Scott Adkins and Michael J. White. And it just keeps sort of going down that um, well, I've got less titles from that actor or when I've got when I decide that they're a lesser tier actor so um, and that's not any offense to the actors but um, Michael Dudikoff is not Arnold Schwarzenegger I'm sure we can agree and I'm sure he agrees and that's where it goes down on these shelves um, so we end up with uh, Joe Lara and uh, Zagarino and a lot of the awesome action stars that uh, spawned my ExplosiveAction.com website as I was uh, learning about the, I won't say underground action movie stars, but the lesser known stars, the non-Stallones, the non-Van Dams. Um, a lot of that is what was spawned here. So this shelf over here is all the science fiction. Um, it starts with a few box sets and series, Star Trek and that kind of stuff at the top. And then we move on to some of my favourites, the Sci-Fi Channel in chronological order of when it was aired. I'm doing pretty well at collecting all these. Love a good Sci-Fi Channel creature feature, which most of them are. And then around about here it turns into Asylum movies. We've got quite a lot of those. A lot of them get local Australian releases, which is a sight to behold. I'm very happy about that. And then it turns into it's hard to see behind the couch, but regular sci-fi Blu-rays and DVDs down here. And this is the throne. This is where I sit and watch everything. Um, as you can see, it is in front of uh, two DVD shelves. It's not hard to get behind it for, for myself anyway. Um, but this is where I sit and enjoy all the action and all the horror. And this is what I watch it on. Um, this is a Plasma TV, Panasonic. Um, big fan of plasmas. Obviously it's about 10 years or more old now, but um, I love this thing. It's got epic black um, blacks on the um, picture, really good contrast ratio, great colours. I have no interest in 4K in terms of UHD and 4K screens, so I like the plasmas also because the analogue inputs and how it handles a VHS signal, very important. Got a few things on display here, got the um, Evil Dead book editions, some skulls, a Jason Voorhees, an Ash, pretty awesome uh, pinhead, and some posters above. And this is where a lot of people would have the most interest. This is the rest of the horror, um, as it says up there at the top, from my Civic Video sign. We start with a lot of Arrow video. I have so many Arrow videos. We've got some Shameless DVDs. Mondo Macabro DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, some various box sets here, the classic monsters, um, Scream Factories, Vinegar Syndromes as well. A few indicators. Uh, the Vestron lineup, which I've got vertically stacked like a madman. And then we have the rest of the horror Blu-rays and DVDs, which start off with uh, Monster Pictures and Umbrella Entertainment. Local Australian labels both. Some glass doll films, whatever happened to that label. Um, some Icon Entertainment, Insomnia, Pictures, Asylum, not the other Asylum, but this is a Madman sub-label I don't think exists anymore. Accent Films, they do great stuff. Got lots of Accent Films. More of the before ones, uh, 21st Century, there's a lot of cheap titles, they're good fun. Same with Magna Pacific, an old DVD label. Some cinema cults, and then on to A to Z 
horror Blu-rays, things that don't need to go with labels and aren't particularly awesome sets or anything like that. Just general titles. You can see I put things on the side because I need to maximise space, so things that match have series, Grave Encounters 1 and 2, Anatomy 1 and 2, Dentist 1 and 2, you get the gift. And uh, horror DVDs, A to Z. A few box sets at the bottom. And also this is where it starts into the, sort of I call it classic horror. Lots of Hammer, lots of Amicus, some black and white stuff. Um, Hitchcock, all those kinds of things. And so over here in the corner is my combination of the VHS carousel and all the Asian films. I have quite a lot of those. Have a look at the VHS carousel. This one was saved from an old video store. So everything spins around. It's a satisfying squeak. This is with the best of the best tapes in my collection. The ones I love the most all go in here. Some great stuff, all of the David Pryor at the top, um, and some super rare titles like uh, Brutal Sorcery, uh, subtitled version, uh, Special Silences, uh, Rage of Vengeance, Space Chase, Blood Street, Stab, you get the idea, that's where the best VHS go. And so starting here is the uh, Asian section, we've got um, some... Tartan Asian Extreme at the top, a few figurines next to it, um, a couple of older Godzilla releases, and then pretty much here this is where the Blu-rays are for Hong Kong, Korean, Chinese, Japanese films, some box sets. This is two layers deep, which is a little annoying, but room is what it is. Um, there's the end of the Hong Kong Legends there. The rest of it is unfortunately behind, but I had to put the Fortune Star legend Legendaries in front. One of my favourites. So, so good. So, so good. Love the Legendaries. Got some more 88 films. The Jackie Chans over there. Um, some of my Universe DVDs. Um, Me R and a few other pretty hard to get Hong Kong DVDs. Um, all behind there. Also is the Shaw Brothers which is stacked behind, uh, the DVDs are behind and then somewhere on the front and then onto the 88 Blu-rays from Shaw and a few Criterions there as well. As we go down further we get some more, um, uh, we've got some dubbed um, Chop Socky Kung Fu films at the front there. A few other local labels um, double stacked again with um, just sort of random uh, Asian action films behind it. Got a few of the Shout Factory sets there on the front. They're all very hard to get these days. And so from the top up here is the Eastern Eye section. Eastern Eye being one of my favourite Australian uh, movie sub-labels from Mad Men. Not many releases come from them anymore but they're still awesome. We've got their Godzilla 4 series box sets there. A lot of their other box sets. The very rare Echo Echo Azarak. Some of their Blu-rays. More box sets, their older DVDs, going down there, some of the newer DVDs when they started to change the spine art, and then as we go down there we have sort of more random uh, Asian films. The big Godzilla box set from Criterion, awesome. And then we're looking at my books. So I've got a, quite a few horror themed books and magazines. Get a reasonable look at them there. And uh, some more down here if I move the Godzilla out of the way. That's where the magazines are. So over here is the, um, well I guess this is the low budget shot on video and ultra gory stuff. Um, but it starts off with um, a few random horror sci-fi things from Vinegar Syndrome and Shout Factory and then into the low budget camp motion pictures and uh, we're onto shot in video territory we've got some Bruno Matai wonders over there some Troma, Troma Blu-rays 
Uh, some full moon picture Blu-rays, and then we're into the gory stuff. Olaf Fittenbach, Necrostorm films, and then all kinds of grotty, horrible stuff. Lots of uh, unearthed films. More unearthed films on Blu-ray. Some of the awesome uh, Grindhouse feature box sets there. Loving these ones um, from Massacre Video. They're putting out great stuff. Um, Camera Obscura, awesome uh, German label, putting out really, really good things. Uh, some old Synapse DVDs, some old Shriek Show DVDs, some of the Blue Underground, older Blu-rays, and some random compilations and things down the bottom here. A few box sets of good things and a handful of steel books I can't get rid of. So this shelf over here we start off with the Blind Dead collection in the coffin box, which is awesome. Uh, the newer range of um, Blue Underground 4K scans, which look really awesome. My Stargate box set. A few record cleaning things. And down here we've got media books and oversized type cases. Some great titles in there. And sci-fi and horror TV series. I've got a handful of those. Including the Tales from the Crypt, Monsters and Masters of Horror. And so this little uh, stand in the corner here has got my Greasy Strangler uh, Blu-ray in the uh, the pink beanie, which I got on the opening night here in Sydney, which was a great night. Um, and then a few um, sort of co cartoons, adult cartoons, um, some British comedy, some classic stuff in there. And that set goes on the other side. Um, We've got some more classic British comedies that go down to the bottom. Australian comedies as well. So let's take a look at the gear. Um, I've got the Oppo BDP 103 uh, Blu-ray player here. This is my main deck. It's multi-region DVD and all zone Blu-ray. On top of that, Super Nintendo Mini that my kid plays. Next to that, we've got a Sony VCD player, a dedicated VCD player, which is great. My um, Sony EZ2000Z uh, VCR. It's a um, temperamental beast, but the picture quality is fantastic, so that's why it's the primary one. And below that, we've got uh, my Pioneer CLDD925 laser displayer. And if we take a look in this basket, this is where all my laser discs are. They're kind of stacked backwards a bit here, but. Uh, no real order to them, some sort of science fiction and action. Hard to get a proper look at. Lots of uh, Hong Kong films, which is the main stuff I'm trying to get on Laserdisc these days because a lot of the time that was the best format that they were on. And lastly we look at my audio stuff. We've got my turntable which is my Pioneer PL514X. Love this turntable. It's from about 1979, I think. Had it um, all cleaned up. It works like a charm. We've got my Pioneer stack of audio equipment here. Uh, the 109 amplifier. Uh, the W208R dual cassette deck, which is really cool. And the CD player we're using now is the W839 which is actually three CDs on the left and a CD burner on the right. So this is pretty early on. Um, I think it was before there were computer CDRs, or maybe around about the same time, but it doesn't take computer CDRs, it takes uh, special music CDRs. So on the off chance that I want to dub a tape to a CD, I have to use special CDs for that. And over here is the record, which has got to be probably the biggest growing part of this collection at this time. Um, the whole record collection is only about 18 months, two years old, and it has ballooned. Uh, we saw the latter half of it in the cupboard, but this is where all the rest of it is, A through to around about S. And it's growing at an alarming rate, as you can see, sneak peek of a few more titles that have come in. And the last thing to show you is the CDs, which at least now are far more accessible than they were. So I've been collecting CDs since the 90s and I'm very satisfied with my collection. 
still buying CDs, bought more even just today. So that's the first of the units, and the second unit is over here. An idea of what's going on. They're on wheels, but very hard to move. They are three-sided, as you can see. Put some stickers on them. So there you go. That's the CDs. And that's pretty much it. You've seen everything in the room. All the DVDs, the Blu-rays, the VHS, and the music. Uh, if you want to see anything closer up, uh, just hit me up, and I will do a video on those at some point. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you next time.